Hello and welcome to another Repfer video. On this video we're going to be taking this 1990 GT Timberline and giving it a new lease of life. So let's get stuck into it and now watch me struggle taking the seat post out. As you can see there, it wasn't the easiest part to remove. It's obviously been in there for a while, so it's pretty well jammed in. So as you're watching the process of stripping the bike down, I'll just go through what the plan is for it. The bike was purchased recently as is, and I've not done anything to it up to this point. Generally, it is in pretty reasonable condition considering it's 23 years old now. The plan is to reuse as much of the original parts on the bike as I can, with only replacing parts that are no longer serviceable. For example, rusty cables. Um, obviously the tires um, probably could be used again, but and for this bike I'm not going to be reusing them so luckily the bike has almost all original parts fitted to it and I think the tire is the only main difference looking at it from the outside there might be other small parts that have been replaced over the years but looking at it generally it looks like it's pretty much a spec that it would have been in 1990. With the video I've tried to condense it as much as I can but get the idea of what's going on you see the process there was a couple of bits that I messed up on when recording I bought a new GoPro and for some reason it didn't record when I did the wheels which was the truing of the wheels and I reserviced the hubs just cleaned them all out and re-greased them and checked that they're all okay and running smoothly um, so unfortunately that's not on there but as much as the other parts and all the other process should be on the video um, but again I've tried to keep it as short as possible while showing everything that's going on so yeah hopefully you enjoyed the video and you know the process that's involved with it. Unfortunately the bike wasn't really in a rideable state mainly due to the cables conditions so I haven't actually been able to ride the bike as yet but that's fine as I'll put it for its paces when it's done. Most of the stripped down process of the bike was pretty straightforward I didn't really come across anything too difficult apart from maybe removing the seat post. Between all the various modern tools I have I managed to get the job done so it, it was pretty straightforward really. The main purpose of this video is to show that you can breathe fresh life back into an old bike and get many more years of enjoyment out of it. Far too many bikes just get thrown to one side and replaced with a modern generic bike. Now there is no substitute for modern technology but for a leisurely bike or something to be used for commuting I still think that something like this is absolutely relevant and still perfect for the job. The whole refurb can be done on a budget and personally I'd rather spend money on this getting it back up together rather than buying a cheap new bike that is just throw away after uh, well probably not even a year i've ridden quite a few cheap bikes before just to see what they're like and yeah they're rubbish so you can see on the video that i'm just working my way around stripping down the parts you can see the spec that's on the bike uh, mostly shimano 300 lx on there i'm not sure how you pronounce it is it xage or xage i don't know but it's 300 LX Shimano um, for the most part. It's got the STI shifters, which are a combination of the shifters and the brake levers. Um, the cranks, 300 LX again. I presume the the actual bottom bracket is still Shimano. Um, I don't think it actually says on there, but I'm presuming it is. So yeah, most of it's Shimano. The wheels are Araya, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, Hubs of Shimano 300LX again, I think, or Xage or Xage. Um, the headset, I'm not entirely sure what that is. I don't think there's a brand on it. It could be Shimano again, but I'm not sure about that. Um, so you can see the brakes are different on the front and on the rear. They're sort of a horseshoe type, I think that's what they're called, on the back, and then the front are cantilever type. Um, so yeah, a bit of a difference i'm surprised they didn't use the same on the back and on the front because the front are mainly plastic and the back are uh, aluminium so yeah it's a bit of a weird combination there but apparently that is what it was standard surprisingly the grips were in pretty good condition and only had a few small cuts in them i will replace them but i'll keep the old ones with the bike uh, also i'm not going to use the reflectors on the bike but again we'll keep them with the bike just in case if the bike does go to a new user, you know, they might want to fit them back on. So I'd like to keep all the original parts of it as possible. The bike has a threaded headset stereotype, which is more common on earlier mountain bikes. I've only worked on a few of this type previously, as I've mainly come across the clamp-on stem types on the bikes that I've worked on. 
Um, obviously nowadays that's more common. I don't know if they even still make a threaded headset. I'm not sure. Or a bike that comes with it, a standard that is. So as you can see, the strip process is almost completed. Just the bottom bracket to remove and then the rear brake. As previously mentioned, it was a fairly quick strip down. I actually really enjoyed doing this one. As you can see, it has potential to be a nice bike when finished. Slightly off topic, whilst I'm finishing the strip down, I have the Project GT STS video coming soon, just to go through all what was done to that and in the overview of the ride. Please like and subscribe so you won't miss that one. So although these types of brakes are a bit fiddly to work with, they are still in my opinion much easier than setting up the Magura hydraulic rim brakes. The last set of them I put on a bike were a pain to do, but maybe that's just the way I did them. That's the strip down all completed. Here's a look over the frame just showing the condition. You can see that there isn't actually that much wrong with it. It's mainly scratches and light rust that needs attending to. So now it's time to get onto the first part that we're gonna start refurbing and that's the rear brakes. So I'm just going to strip off the brake pads first, get them out of the way, and then we're going to give it a clean up first. So let's get on with it. Now that the bits are all off, I'm just going to go over some degreaser on a cloth and also use an old toothbrush just to get off all the little bits in all the crevices. So that's the first thing to do now and then we can move on to the next stage of it. The same also applies for all the small little bits that are on the brakes. So I'm going to go over them and degrease them and just get them up a bit better than what they are looking currently. Obviously all these parts are used parts. There's only so much you can do unless you replace them. Um, obviously some bits you'll get up and looking brand new but other bits might not come up quite so well especially plastic bits with digs and things like that. Um, so yeah I'm just going to do my best to try and get them back and get them working in the condition they should have been previously. Now I'm going to move on to polishing up these small aluminium bits and the arms for the brakes. So all I've got is some auto sole metal polish here. So I'm just going to apply that and then I've got a small little Dremel that I'm going to use to go around and polish it up. They've just got like a felt polishing head on them. Um, so hopefully we can get them looking a lot better. I don't want to go for a real high gloss finish on this. I just want to go for like a sheen just to bring it up a little bit better and give it a bit of a shine. You can see almost instantly the difference that it makes just going over this and that's without rubbing down the surface beforehand to get any scratches out. This is just literally going straight over the auto cell metal polish and just the difference that it makes is a hell of a lot. So with some of these videos that I'm doing on here, obviously they're sort of shortened down just for this video because otherwise it would be a massively long video doing the refurb for every part on here. So I've tried to condense it down as much as possible but what I am planning to do is a lot of the smaller jobs like the brakes and stuff I'm going to then do like another separate video showing the process a bit more in depth. Now you can see I'm just putting the parts back onto the brake arms themselves. Obviously these will be set up properly when they're fully on the bike. And that's the first part all refurbed and done. So now on to the next bit. Here we have the front derailleur, so let's make a start. Again, the first thing I'm going to do is give it a good clean using solvent-based degreaser on a rag and an old toothbrush. I've also removed the decal lettering which will be restuck after it's all cleaned up. 
This trailer is the X-Age 300LX type. It's in good physical condition as can be seen in the video. To be honest, judging by the state of the components, I'd say the bike has had a fairly good life, just lacked keeping the service up on it, which is why we're doing what we're doing now. So whilst we're doing the refurb on the front trailer, I thought I'd just discuss the wheels because obviously I haven't got a video for that, like I said earlier on in the video. Um, so all I did with that is I just took the tyres off, took the inner tubes out, gave it a real good clean up um, so the rim was all checked and everything. Then I put it on a truing stand and got it all nice and true. They weren't too bad. One was worse than the other. I think it might have been the rear was worse. It was quite a bit of rubbing on the brake pads as it was going round. Um, so that was sorted out. And then the hubs were stripped down, all the bearings taken out. It was degreased, cleaned up. And then I just repacked the grease and put all the bearings back in and just set the hub up so it was nice and free moving, um, just without any play in it. So that was them. Also, I realized that the handlebars, I haven't got the video for them either. So with them, I just sanded them all down, um, which wasn't too bad. They were a little bit sort of scabby of rust. So I, I sort of sanded them down as best I could without going too mad where the GT logos are because they're actually pressed into the handlebars. So if you sand that down too much, you'll end up losing that. So luckily I could get rid of all the sort of grubbiness and the rust and everything around that area without sanding them down too much. Then I just gave them a couple of coats of primer, nibbed that down a bit, with a um, bit of wet and dry, and then painted them with a nice coat of black to give them the original finish. So going back to the video um, and what's going on at the moment, so now I'm onto the rear dralia. I actually posted a video recently showing the full process of this rear dralia being refurbed. So this is obviously a shortened version of that. But you can see I'm stripping it down first of all before I go on and then give it a good clean again with a rag and with an old toothbrush just to clean it out using the solvent based degreaser. On the dralia there was actually quite a lot of hardened mud and grease on a lot of the cogs um, and inside of it you can see that just before I started uh, using the degreaser on it. So that had to be scraped off first before I went any further. So now you can see that I'm just polishing up the bare metal parts on the derailleur. Again, I don't want to go high, high gloss on this. I just want to give it a nice sheen, just clean it up a little bit. Um, I'm not sure from original whether they were really high gloss, um, shiny parts. They might well have been, but I'm just going to try and tidy up a little bit, get the sheen back on it um, without going too mad. Now that it's been cleaned, I'm just starting to put it back together again, just greasing some of the parts as I do it. This little part that I'm doing at the moment was probably the trickiest part to get on because you've got to sort of push it down on the spring whilst you clip it over the edge. So that's worth watching the other video I've got the full strip down. You'll see it a lot better on that one. So again, that's another part finished, all back together, all greased up, looking good. So now we can move on to the next part. This is going to be the bottom bracket. This one not looking quite so good. You can see obviously this one's been water damaged. Um, I think most of the rust is from the frame and it's sort of dripped down. But you'll see as I start to clean it, that it comes off fairly easy. I think it's rust from what's come off the down tube and then it's stuck to the old grease. I just used a wire brush on this one after I degreased it just to clean off any of the surface rust mainly on the two square taper ends um, and also on the middle I had a little bit but that wasn't too bad. So now I'm just going to take the bearings out, clean them up, uh, firstly removing all the individual bearings themselves and then cleaning that on a rag and then we can look at getting it repacked with grease um, and then it should hopefully run nicely again. You can see that I'm just doing that now, just putting the grease inside the bearings making sure it's got enough in there um, to protect them and run nice and smoothly. To be honest, the bottom bracket refurb that I've just done was actually quite satisfying because the condition, when you look at it, you think, oh my God, it's you know knackered, but it actually cleaned up nice and easily. It was mainly just on the surface. Um, and like I said, it was just the rust and the grease, most of it. And now onto the headset bearings, pretty much exactly the same process as what we've just done on the bottom bracket. So I'm gonna remove all the bearings uh, individually, just clean them up in the degreaser uh, on a rag and then we can clean up the shell and then put it all back together and then repack it with grease. Um, so again, another simple job really on this part. Although it's quite time consuming doing this and popping the bearings out and cleaning them up and putting them back in, it's worth doing it because you'll struggle to get all the grime out of it. So to give them the best sort of future, um, it's best to take them out, clean them, and then the sort of longevity of them will be better doing it this way rather than leaving any sort of grit or dirt or anything like that in there. 
So now I'm to doing the cranking the pedals. I just apologised quickly about the shakiness on the camera. I had my GoPro and it was rested right up against the table and the table was wobbling so it only does it initially so it's okay in a minute. But I just thought it'd save me time and getting the other camera out while I was outside doing this. Um, so yeah I'm just removing the pedals first and then I can get the cogs removed and then we can look at cleaning up the arms and I'm going to give them a coat of silver um, just to freshen them back up again. So now I'm just cleaning up the cogs. Um, again, there was a lot of sort of hardened grease and dirt on these. So I just used a bit of scotch Brite with a bit of solvent degreaser gently to remove it. And that got off quite well. Now I was going to repaint these, but I didn't think it was really worth doing it. Obviously the chain's going to start marking it again and they weren't actually that bad. So now I'm just finishing these up, putting them back together, putting the cogs back on the arms. And then we can look at getting the pedals back on. So although I don't show it with the pedals, I just took them apart, cleaned them up. And then the outer shell, I just gave that another coat of black. So now we're on to the STI shifters. So the first thing to do is strip them down. First of all, they're going to be degreased and then I'm going to clean them up. And on this part, I'm going to give them a coat of satin black just to freshen it up again. I'm just going to mask off the bottom section though, so it doesn't go over any, any of the decals or anything like that. You can see here just with a coat of satin black on there it just gives it a nice fresh new look to it. Now just continuing to clean the other bits and degrease them. So with the main actual shifter part of the STI shifters I'm going to clean that out of degreaser as best as I can and then I'm going to regrease that. I've actually got some chain lube that I'm going to use on this because I think it will work its way in better rather than just using normal grease on the edges. I think the chain lube will just penetrate into it better than the normal grease will and hopefully get it clicking and working and shifting as well as it should have done originally. Here I'm just doing a quick check that it's shifting and clicking into the right gears, just manually doing it this way. I know sometimes when you haven't got the cables connected they don't always shift 100% properly but as long as I can get the idea of it moving and sort of engaging into the right area then it's okay I can carry on. So that's the STI units all done and now I can move on to the frame. I'm just going to give it a good degrease and then we can look at going over all the scratches and marks on it. So even just going over it with a degreaser, with a rag, you can just see the frame looks so much better as you start doing that and removing the grime around it. So the beauty of this frame is that it's got the speckled finish on it. Now, not only does that look good, the good thing is when you touch it in, now I can just touch it in with little blobs um, and just try and replicate those splatters on the paint finish. So it gets hidden a hell of a lot more than what it would have done if it was just one single colour and you're touching it in because you would need to then match that paint exactly right. So I've got some sort of mid grey which is similar to the frame colour which I can touch in with that and also I've got some white um, and some lighter grey and also a bit of black you can go around with. So doing it that way I can hide a hell of a lot but the first thing I'm going to do on the frame with all the areas where they're corroded I've got some rust converter which I'm going to touch in and go over everything um, with that on all the corrosion. Now I know that's not a sort of a cure for it, it's not going to solve it and keep it back forever but it should hold it back a bit longer again um, and just give it a good base for the paint to go on top. Now it is a bit of a tedious job doing this but it's well worth it in the end. You can see on this example of where I'm touching in the colour here you can see it blends in really well because you've got that splattered finish it hides it so much better. Now I'm not going to show every touch that I do on it but you get the idea from just showing this. Now that I've touched in all the frame I'm now going to clean out the area for the bottom bracket. Again this is quite a bit of corrosion in here. It's mainly just grease with the corrosion mixed into it which makes it look worse. So I'm going to get a rag and clean this out with solvent degreaser again. And now that's done I'm going to put some copper grease in the area which will help corrosion and it will make it easier for the bottom bracket to come out in the future. Also whilst I'm here I'm going to fit the bottom bracket back in. Adding more grease to the bottom bracket shaft as I put it in there which will help lubricate it once it's in place. 
So I didn't actually have the proper tool to do this part of the bottom bracket, so I had to use a set of adjustable grips to do this. Now onto fitting the rear brakes. As you can see, some of the parts are now starting to go back on the bike. Most of the refurb's done on all the bits, and now we can look at getting it back together again. The brakes will just be mounted for now but any fine adjustment will be done once the cables are put on and the wheels are back on the bike. So now the brakes are fitted on, we can now look at getting the forks back in place and getting the stem mounted back on. And now for the handlebars, with these I did put a little bit of grease round inside the stem just to slide them on easier. I didn't really want to scratch the black just after I've painted them and obviously mark them. So you can see here now the bike's starting to take shape and is coming back together. I'm now putting the rear wheel on, obviously that's a simple task. And now to remount the rear derailleur. You can obviously see now with the rear wheel fitted the tyre that I've put on there rather than those skinny tyres. So I've just got a set of brown wall side retro looking tyres just to go with the 1990s look. Now again the front wheel being fitted and also tightening up the headset. So now to fit the crank arms back on, this is pretty straightforward. You fit them onto the square tapered end and then screw back on the nuts to the end of the bottom bracket shaft. And now for the front brakes to be bolted back on, again all the adjustment will be done once the cables are put onto the bike. Two of these front brakes, I cleaned them up, degreased them, took the pads and everything off of them and cleaned them and then put them back together. And now to replace the pedals back onto the crank arms. Now you can see where I've painted the outer shells on those just to freshen them back up and I just cleaned the inner aluminium parts. Now to fit the front derailleur. Again with this one it can only be adjusted when the cables are put back on. Moving back to the front here now I'm going to put the STI shifters and levers back onto the handlebars and then putting new grips onto the end of the handlebars. Now it's time to feed all the lines back on for the brakes and the gears. So this involves first getting all the outer casings ready, um, cutting them down, and then we can feed through the inner wires, through into all the correct locations, through the outer sleeves. Although this is a relatively easy job, um, it just involves cutting down the outer sleeves and then the inner cables. There's obviously now involves quite a bit of adjustment on the brakes and on the gears. So this is what takes the time now to get this right, to make sure everything's braking okay and shifting okay. This often involves quite a bit of undoing, doing up, adjusting, um, and just fine tuning to get it right. It doesn't always go right exactly the first time you do it. So it quite often takes a bit of messing around with. Now, when you get used to doing these sort of things, you can find a quicker way of doing it um, and go through it a lot quicker than what you would if you were doing it for the first time. Um, but even then you've still got to do minor adjustments. Now I'm just putting the chain back on. I used the original chain because it seemed okay. I degreased it, uh, cleaned it all out. I haven't shown that again on here but I made sure that was nice and clean before it went back on and just checked it um, and then I just bought a new link, one of those quick release links uh, which I'm just putting back together here. And now here I'm just going through the process of setting up the rear derailleur and then making sure that it's shifting okay before I move on to the front derailleur. Again with this, often it takes quite a few little micro adjustments to get it clicking okay. You've obviously got to set up the maximum and the minimum on the derailleur using the screws at the back of the rear derailleur. Um, but then little adjustments on the cable just to get it going through all the gears correctly. And now on to setting up the front derailleur. Again, similar process to the rear. Obviously got to set the maximum and the minimum on it um, and then just the tweaks using the gear cable. With this shifter I think I mentioned before it's a bit of a weird shifting uh, going up. Um, it sort of has micro adjustments when you're clicking it and then on the way back down it clicks each individual one. Now onto the seat refurb. So I've done a few seat refurbs already on the channel um, which you might have already seen. This one was a bit of a learning curve to be honest because I did all the usual things that I normally do. However when I got inside there's like a thin layer of foam which is separate from the main layer so it made it quite tricky to then put the leather on top of it. It then moved a bit so looking back at it Although I carried on and persevered and got on there, it wasn't ideal. I wouldn't do that again. Um, I would remove that layer of foam or maybe stick it down first. 
So what happens with that thin layer is you end up sticking it to that and then it's moving underneath. So it's not ideal and you can't get a nice tight finish around it. It ends up being looser. But I ended up leaving it. Um, I wouldn't do it again, but there you go. So now I'm just heat pressing the lettering onto the leather. And now we come to the last part of the refurb process. Before we reveal the bike, I'm going to take it out for a ride and give it a good testing. Let's give it a go. We've managed to reuse most of the original parts and refurbish them to a good standard which will give them many more years of usage. Out on the test ride it performed really well albeit it is a very stiff bike but this is mainly due to the still rigid frame and forks which is to be expected. It shifts really well through the gears and the brakes worked as they should. Obviously being older brakes you do have to brake about 20 yards sooner than what you would on a modern bike. From every angle the bike now looks great. It's now ready again to serve someone well whether it's a daily commute or general recreational riding. The small amount of riding I've done on it since the refurb certainly brought a smile to my face and I think this will be the case for whoever rides it. They'll just truly appreciate that it is a great bike. Thanks for taking the time to watch the video. It's really appreciated. I hope you enjoyed it. There's going to be many more videos like this to come. Please like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.